Well, I am excited this morning to be bringing the message, the next message in our rest and feast season, which is talking about the principle of the Sabbath. And uh, for me, the Sabbath is something that I have probably challenged, been challenged with the most in terms of biblical principles and taking rest and resting in God and slowing down. For me, life, I love, I love when life is busy and I love when life is on the go and I don't like sitting still for too long. And so this morning, uh, I'm going to take you through a journey, a bit of a journey of what I've been going through as I focus in on the principle of the Sabbath and taking rest in God. And my prayer and hope is that uh, today, wherever you are at in your practice of the Sabbath, that you would grow in that. And something that I've learned is that the Sabbath is not about the rule. It's actually the Sabbath is all about trust and relationship. It's about trust and relationship with God. You know, the Sabbath commandment comes from Exodus 20, 8 to 11 says, Remember the Sabbath by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servants, nor your animals, nor your any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. The Sabbath commandment is not merely a suggestion, but a divine mandate. It's a day set apart for rest, worship and reflection. God himself demonstrated this rest after creating the heavens and the earth. If God in all his omni, um, omni, omnipot- omni oh, I get this word wrong every time, omnipotence. Yep, there we go. Um, the reason I left it in there and didn't swap it out for a uh, um, different word is because it is a significant word. So go and look it up in the dictionary if you're unsure about what it uh, means. But God took a day of rest. If he took a, a day of rest in all his greatness, how much more do we in human frailty need this day of rest? You know, the principle of the Sabbath is when I've been looking at this and thinking about this, is actually closely linked uh, in thought processes in your mind and in your uh, brain to the principle of the tithing. Um, so tithing is all about, and you know, I'm not going to go into it today, is about all, all about uh, acknowledging it's God who gives you your money and you give back to him and you give back a tenth back to him. Well, uh, the Sabbath is similar in terms of that you're acknowledging that who you are is created by God and your time is actually God's, not yours, but you're giving a tenth back to him. Because if you do the math, which I'm a math brain person, if you sleep for average of seven hours uh, a night, uh, hallelujah, if you get seven hours of sleep a night, but the average person gets about seven. Uh, if you take seven hours out of a day, you get 17 hours, which is actually a tenth of your week. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Mic drop moment, I'll leave. Uh, Um, So when we honour God in the Sabbath, it is a similar principle. We're giving a tenth of our time back to God. You know, previously, I, I, as I said, I love to be on the go. I love to be not sitting still. uh, And it has probably hurt me in times. You know, there was a time where I was doing three jobs, juggling three jobs, would no, very rarely be home. My parents who are in the room this morning um, could attest to that, that they never knew when I was coming or going. Uh, I used to Uber drive just to make some extra coin. Um, and I used to actually have a shirt that said, sleep when you're dead, <laughs> because that was a little bit of my mandate. However, that, that is not a healthy habit. <laughs> just to put that out there, it is not a healthy habit to be on the go. 24 7 to not rest to not rest in god to take some time to rest in his presence i've been to a a point where i was pretty much in burnout because i was running on the go so hard now however busy i was and this is something i want to encourage us this morning with however busy 
I was, my priority was always to be in church on a Sunday, to be serving in church on a Sunday. And uh, I want to encourage you to put that first. Let that be your first step of observing the Sabbath. Let that be your first step of going, I'm going to honour God with my time by being in church for a few hours on a Sunday morning. Honour God with your time. You know, I can tell you that it is a great blessing not only to the other people around you that you interact with, but it's a blessing to you when you're in a group of people in community in one accord with Christ. You know, church also, I'm going to say this, I love this saying, church is a participation sport, not a spectator sport. Let me say it again. Participation is a, church is a participation sport, not a spectator sport. Be in church and serving as part of your Sabbath. Start there. Be in church, serving. When you serve, I don't have a um, degree in psychology, uh, but I have a... 10% understanding. Um, But when you actually serve in church and you do that together, there's something in the brain, the chemicals in the brain actually have an endorphin hit, which is good for your body, which actually releases rest. It releases rest into you. It releases joy and rest in you when you serve with one another. Be in church. Start there in honouring God with your time. It's all about relationship and trust. You know, the Sabbath is such an important thing and I want to encourage you to uh, go on this journey, thinking in time and spending time with God about where you're at in your Sabbath journey. You know, the Sabbath journey has a purpose. It's not just a rule. It's definitely not about the rule. It's about your trust and relationship with God. And the purpose of the Sabbath is this, firstly, for rest for the body. Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit, says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. It says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You know, going back to the 10% analogy, right? God has created you. You're not your own. When we give back our time back to God, we're honouring him with what he's given us. God designed us to need rest. When we work continuously without rest, we risk burnout, stress and physical ailments. Who knows that when you work hard, and I can tell you there's a lot of teachers who have this principle, when they get to school holidays, they work, they think that they need to work seven days a week, every week, doing study, make, getting prep, things prepped on, a, on their Sabbath, and they get to school holidays and they end up sick. You know, that's the case that where I've been previously, where I was working so hard that I didn't ha- take some time to rest. My body was screaming for rest and I'd get to my holiday and I would just be sick. I didn't realise how important it is to just take some rest in your weekly, week to week. You know, I was prioritising church, I was being in church. But it's a little bit more than that. It's about resting in God. Secondly, it's about a renewal for the mind. The Sabbath is a time to step back from our daily routines and allow our minds to be refreshed. Romans 12.2 tells us, Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When we set aside our work and focus on God, we experience mental and emotional renewal. Our soul finds rest in God. The world says that we must work hard. It's only through working um, heaps that you get the nice house or the nice car, but actually it's when we honour God and put our trust in him, he provides all we need. When we rest, we observe the Sabbath and we are renewing our soul and mind, finding true rest in God. When we honour God with rest, it renews our mind. When we honour God with our time, he takes care of the rest. You know, Rachel mentions uh, Matthew 6.33 earlier, which is the basis of seek, God the first, uh, seek first the kingdom of God and all these worries will be taken care of by God. You know, when we spend time in the Sabbath and spend time in rest in God, he renews our mind and he takes care of those burdens and those worries that we have on our mind. Next, revival for the spirit. Most importantly... 
The Sabbath and time of rest is a time to draw closer to God. It's a day dedicated, day dedicated to worship, prayer and studying God's word. It's a time to be filled afresh with the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 58, 13 to 14 says, If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honourable, and if you honour it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord and I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Blessing comes when we honour God with our time, when we honour him and spend time in him, when we rest in him, when we spend time in worship, when we spend time reading the Bible, when we spend time with God in relationship with him. You know, the Sabbath is wholly about relationship. You know, Back to that tithing principle that God doesn't need your money to build the kingdom of God. He wants your heart. And with the Sabbath, it's the same when He doesn't need your time. He doesn't need you serving in church, right? He's God. He can do it all. But He wants your heart in relationship to Him. And He wants your heart honouring God with your time. So rest for the body, renewal of the mind and revival for the spirit. But how do we tackle a Sabbath? How do we start if we haven't started before? Well, firstly, it starts with relationship. It starts with a relationship with God, with Jesus. You know, you can't have a Sabbath without being in relationship with God. It's just having a day off. It's just not going to work. So it starts with a relationship. It starts with a relationship with Jesus. And, you know, I want to give you a moment right now. You know, if you haven't said yes to Jesus before, if you haven't put him first in your life, if you haven't invited him to be a part of your day to day, I want to encourage you to say yes to him. And I'm going to ask that every head be bowed, every eye be closed in the room right now. You know, if you've never entered into a relationship with Jesus to hand your life to him to acknowledge it's him who gives you life it's him who gives you what you have you know we say a prayer together as a church just to acknowledge Jesus in our life and I want to encourage you right now if you want to say that prayer for the first time right now to place your hand up nice and high we're going to pray together as a church to say yes to him together to to join you in saying yes to him so if that's you just place your hand up nice and high so I can see who that is church let's pray this prayer together Jesus this is my decision today I say yes to you you died on the cross to pay the price for my sin I invite you to be my saviour. Come into my life. Forgive my sin. And fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It starts with a relationship. Secondly, prepare in advance. Just as the Israelites gathered double manna the day before the Sabbath... You can go and read Exodus 16 for that. We should prepare in advance. Complete your work, your chores before the Sabbath begins. Plan your meals and activities so that you can fully rest and focus on God. Prepare to have a Sabbath. You know, when you actually prepare to have a Sabbath, you're going to, even just in the preparing, you're going to see blessing. It's Something happens in your brain when you start to prepare for something, right? You get excited. You get hopeful. Hopeful, you know, when we have a Sabbath, hopeful that for God to move in that Sabbath. Prepare in advance. When I recently, I've gone on a journey of 
looking at my Sabbath, my pers- personal Sabbath journey, and um, I've even contemplated and looked at even and, and started to test and change my week to where I might have a Sabbath on a different day to a Sunday, still honouring God in being in church and serving, but also adding an extra layer of being having a Sabbath on another day of the week. And when I prepare those days, I prepare to go to a coffee shop. I prepare my day out. I prepare to read the Bible. I prepare to listen to music, to worship music. I prepare where and what we're gonna, I'm going to do on that day. You know, maybe for you, it's the acknowledging you need to be in church every Sunday and going, I'm going to honor God with my Sabbath and be in the room on a Sunday. That means I don't take, I don't work on a Sunday. My phone gets switched off. You know, for me, uh, I'm changing jobs, moving where I currently live, changing jobs. And I've had some job interviews and I've missed out because I said I won't work on a Sunday. And the world says, nah, it doesn't matter about church. Just work whenever you want. And even the job that I have landed, the, the boss wanted me to work on a Sunday. And I said, no, 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 I don't work on Sundays. And thank God he moved where he wanted me to be in that workplace because, to not work on Sundays. You know, God honours you. He provides a way for you when you honour Him first, when you say, you know, I'm going to choose to be in church on a Sunday. Next, disconnect to reconnect. You know, our phones, our technology, our digital age, it's very easy to remain connected to work through our phones and computers. You know, make a conscious effort to mute, mute the apps where work comes in on. Maybe turn your phone off. I struggle with this still. I struggle because my phone goes off many times a day. And the business that I work in on a Sunday is on. But disconnect to reconnect with God. Turn off your work emails and anything that comes that's going to distract you from connecting with God. Next, engage in worship. You know, listen to worship. Worship means that be in the room, in a service for worship. Maybe participate in prayer meetings, praying with one another, maybe being in a life group. Spend time in personal devotions. Spend time with God, praying to God. Sing praises, read the Bible, meditate on God's promises for you. You know, make worship of God the center of your Sabbath. Next, rest and reflect. Take time to rest physically. One of the reasons that I decided to kind of look at my Sabbath being slightly different in the last season, being on a different day of the week, was this thing, rest. And because I was like, I want to I want to have a, a restful time and of a restful morning and start my day in rest, sleeping, if you want to call it that. Um, and that's one of the big reasons that I was like, I'm going to have a sleep in on this day because I'm going to rest, let my body to recoup, but also then reflect, you know, use that restful time to reflect, whether it's taking a nap, going for a walk in nature, simply sitting quietly in prayer. You know, for me, it's sitting at the coffee shop with my Bible app open, reading God's word. Reflecting on God's goodness and faithfulness for the week that's been, the week that's to come. Next, feast with family and friends. You know, the Sabbath is about a time of community as well. You know, Sunday is, a, is an amazing time to be, to make your Sabbath if you haven't already. Because you're already in community when you come to church. Maybe you want to create a habit of going out for lunch after church. Maybe you want to create a habit of inviting someone around for a meal. Make sure you do the prep work the day before. Put the slow cooker on the night before. Um, I think that's how you cook. Uh, But feast with family, with friends. Feast together. Feasting on God's goodness, God's gratefulness, God's 
impact in your life. And finally, make room for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Observing the Sabbath strengthens our relationship with God, renews our spirits, empowers us to face the challenges of the coming week. It's a time time to lay down our burdens, renew our minds and revive our spirits. Let's embrace the Sabbath as a holy day, a day of rest, renewal and revival. Allow God to speak to you. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in your Sabbath. And I want us to practice that right now. I've asked the team to sing, make room one more time. And I want to ask you to stand to your feet as we spend some time resting in God, resting in worship in God, honouring that principle of honouring our time to God. The team are going to sing, make room. And I want to encourage you to make room for God to speak to you this morning, for God, God's Holy Spirit to rest on you. And you know, if you would like prayer for anything, you know, Jesus upset the apple cart by healing people on the Sabbath. God's about doing miracles on the Sabbath. If you need a miracle this morning, if you just want a touch from God this morning, you want someone to stand and pray with you this morning, I want to encourage you to come out the front. Maybe you want to just reconnect with God this morning. I want you to come out the front and just allow His Holy Spirit to rest on you this morning. This is my for people who are either in business, have businesses, or are leaders of businesses, or are looking or have a, have a desire to be in business. You know, the world says when you're a business owner or you're a leader of business, the world says that you're always on. The world says that you're always busy. The world says you're now tied to your business. But I get a sense to just pray for people for blessing and favour in business ventures, in business dealings, for God to honour people when they honour their time, honour God with their time, He honours your business, your venture. So if you are in business, whether you run business, whether you have your own business, whether you're leading businesses, I want to encourage you to come down the front because I really feel to pray for you this morning as the team continue to sing.